Good morning. I'm Lynn Ford. Thanks for joining me for today's Mid-Morning. In Ephesians 2.10, the Apostle Paul calls all Christians masterpieces, poema in Greek. It is through Christ, his life, death, and resurrection that we become masterpieces, one-of-a-kind expressions telling God's glory. And as Christians, God wants to do a good work in us, changing us to look like Christ, and through us, being his goodness and glory to the world so others might be so taken with God, they want to become his children too. Poema people are men and women who, through God's Spirit, are becoming a good work and doing a good work. And I pray we'll all be encouraged and challenged by the stories this morning. Thank you to Clark Chiropractic Clinic, 6015 East State Boulevard in Fort Wayne, for helping to make our first Poema People interview possible. We appreciate Clark Chiropractic Clinic and their partnership and ministry. For 40 years, Pastor Phil Mortensen has ministered to the poor and needy of Fort Wayne. The pastor of Love Church on East Berry Street is with us us on mid-morning along with his son Michael, director of Fort Wayne Alumni and Friend Relations for Taylor University, to share highlights of this ministry that God began and continues to provide for and bless. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I laugh because these are two men, sometimes with a guest you have to sort of encourage them before we go on the air to take the freedom to answer the questions and to speak up and, you know, it's going to be okay. Uh, these two guys don't need that. In fact, <laughs> I, I might need to say, hey, Guys, tone it down. (laughs) (laughs) Phil, when and how did you become a follower of Christ? Tell us your faith story. Well, uh, good morning, Lynn. Um, I came from a wonderful Christian home, and uh, I became a a Christian uh, at the age of eight. And uh, I just, I saw Christ in my mom and dad, and uh, they were real heroes uh, to Michael, and um, and everybody that knew them. The, the, my dad was a pastor, and he lived what he preached. And um, so I was uh, saved when I was eight, and I was uh, baptized when I was 12. I was a little afraid that my dad wouldn't let me up, but um, <laughs> he needed me as a tax exemption, and so um, I did survive that. But uh, when I got in the United States Army, I, uh, I never really appreciated my faith until I saw others that didn't have what I had in the Lord. And I committed my entire life to the Lord while I was in the in the military and um, came to Fort Wayne, and the rest is history. So what um, what brought you into the pastorate? When did you know you wanted to be a pastor or you felt God leading to do that? Well, that's a good question. Actually, I didn't want to be a pastor. Uh, my dad was a pastor. My uncle was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. And I just wanted to sell shoes and sit in the back row and, and um, of the church and give my 10%. And, and um, The truth but, is he wanted to be a radio announcer. That's right. Seriously? Well, I was a radio announcer, actually. Uh, WDOG, WDOG, Marine City, Michigan, uh, WDOG. And, um, but we don't have enough time to go into that. But, um, yes, I made a dollar five an hour, which is, uh, I think, a little more than you make, Lynn. But... Um, uh, we Ministry a, has never all paid all that much, has it? But it's, <laughs> no. you, make, you can make a living. Yeah, great is your reward yeah. in heaven. Yeah, you can make you know. a living. But um, when I got in the Army, um, I was given the opportunity. We didn't have a Sunday night service. And so we, we started a Sunday night service in Berlin. And men and women uh, came to know Christ. And uh, in 1969, um, I led a young man to the Lord from the inner city of New York City. And I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll do anything you want, including being a pastor. And so that's why I came to Fort Wayne and Fort Wayne Bible College in 1970 to, to study for the pastorate. And we're still hanging in there 40 years later. Yes, you are. And while there's someone else taking over as senior pastor, you're moving into a part-time ambassador position. And when right. I asked you what that was, you said, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Work well, in progress. The Bible says that we're all ambassadors for Christ, but um, I have a heart for the poor, and I have a heart for the Christian community, and I, I want to represent. Uh, I want to represent the poor and help more Christians get involved in helping them. Um, I believe, without question, the first priority of Jesus was to minister to the poor, and I have. Uh, I have a love, uh, a love frustration relationship with the church because it has the capacity to do so much good and has the capacity to do so much evil, uh, depending on whether it chooses to get involved or not. And it's revolutionized my life. And um, 
I'm just I'm just grateful. So I want to work with pastors and encourage them to hang in there. Um, my dear friend Bob Yarberg, who's been interviewed on this program, oh, yeah. said uh, nine out of ten pastors who start in the ministry never complete it. And I'd like to help some. Uh, I'd like to help some men and women cross the finish line if I can. What are some of the reasons why they don't finish? What is what is it that is so disheartening, mm-hmm. so difficult about mm-hmm. the pastorate? Well, uh, Ron Blue, uh, who's um, who's a financial counselor, <laughs> he says the number one reason is funds, uh, money. They're just uh, we don't we don't treat pastors like we do other occupations, and so finance is a pro- is a problem. Um, church politics is a problem. Um, We're one of the few organizations that actually um, form our firing squads in a circle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we shoot the wounded. And oftentimes, uh, pastors are the first in line. You know, whether you didn't like the, the sermon that particular Sunday or you uh, don't like the, the program that's been created, uh, we live in such a, um, a world now that if you're not meeting my needs, then I'm going to go find someplace else that will. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's definitely something that's changed, I think, over the years. So how do you think you can make a difference in that, Phil? Uh, just one-on-one. Uh, Bob Yarberg made a difference in my life. Uh, my Army chaplains made a difference in my life. Um, other pastors have made a, a difference in my life. And um, nobody... Nobody makes it in this life without help. And uh, but pastors have to be humble enough to admit that they need it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm involved in a weekly pastors get together, a monthly pastors get together, a yearly pastors get together, and um, you know I've I've had pastors stand me up. I've had pastors who uh, said, "Yeah, we'll get together someday." Someday never gets on the calendar. You just you just have to make. Uh, relationships a priority within the body of Christ and uh, another thing that's helped me is uh, I will go to my grave believing there's only one body and uh, I read that in a book someplace I was going to say that's very biblical Pastor Phil (laughs) Um, but um, I mean WBCL I think of the literally thousands of uh, you know uh, I just commend you guys and everybody that reaches across denominational lines um, because we really, really need each other. Uh, the way is narrow, mm-hmm. and a few there be that find it. So we have to encourage the few to to uh, stick on that stick on that narrow road. And um, so, if we can encourage pastors to hang in there, uh, I, I really believe that's part of part of our calling. Tell us the story of Love Church. Well, uh, once again, I think it goes back to the Army. Uh, the young man that I led to Christ in 1969, his name was Herman. Herman de Gurr, and he was from Bedford-Stuyvesant, which is a, an inner city, inner city area of New York City. And uh, Herman had a lot of problems uh, that are associated with the inner city. And um, his, his, uh, his father was an alcoholic. His mother uh, was, uh, she died of cancer. His sister was uh, beaten. And her body literally was thrown in a meat grinder and the remains were thrown in the East River. Um, he'd never seen a Bible. Um, and, I, and I led Herman to the Lord and while he was getting saved. I was getting dedicated. And um, it's just the the hurt, the pain, the ignorance. I'd, I'd never experienced that until I got in the Army. I, I'd never worshipped with anybody from another race. Uh, we never had any uh, any outside speakers. Maybe during a missions conference, we'd allow somebody of a different race to come in and speak. But, um, you know, 93% of all American churches are racially segregated. And... And I remember the first time going to a, a military chapel, and the, uh, the Pentecostal brothers were hooting, and and uh, I was used to sleeping in church, and it's really hard to get a good night's rest in church when somebody's hooting and jumping around, and it just drove me crazy. And I, but there was only one church that we could go to. Uh, we didn't have 372 churches like we do in Allen County. So I just kept going and kept going and kept going, and and then I fell in love with it. And um, so, actually, Love Church is very similar to what we experienced in the military. 
Uh, we cross many different lines. And um, we started in 1986 in uh, Ralph Moon's living room. Uh, Michael Mortensen was uh, two years old at that time. And... Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But he's potty trained now. We're, we're grateful for that. But uh, but it was that's encouraging for every yes, parent yes, who said yes, yes, by yes, the ab- time they go to kindergarten or hopefully <laughs> yes, hopefully, high school, hopefully. But uh, I, I saw something in the military that w- we were able to cross denominational lines. We were able to cross racial lines. We were able to uh, class class lines. I mean, there were there were black people that were laying their life down for white people, and white people were literally laying down their life for black people. It didn't make any difference what color it was. And so uh, what God, what I saw in the three years, 11 months and 18 days I was on active duty, I saw what the church could be. And so that was, uh, that's how really we started Love Church with that kind of model that we saw in the military. And if you attend uh, Love Church this Sunday, you'll see a a great cross-section racially, education-wise, class-wise of the uh, community, and for that we're grateful. Uh, I think, uh, Lynn, one of the things that um, my dad was given a second chance, essentially, too, because he started Fellowship Bible Church in 1971, and it grew, and it was helping a lot of poor and needy people then, but then he kind of got away from basically what God had called him to in terms of helping the poor and the needy. And so he left the ministry a very discouraged uh, pastor. And uh, we moved to Illinois for a short time. My mom stayed here. Uh, My sister was here. I was living in Illinois with a family that I met the day I moved in. And so my dad had been there, done that, and got the T-shirt like some of the pastors that are out there today that are struggling but he was essentially given a second chance and a new lease on life and he'll tell you today that there's no pastor that is happier than he is Mm -hmm. and it's based upon doing what god called him to do and being faithful to that call now for uh 40 Mm -hmm. years uh this december and uh contrary to belief i was not to in 1986 (laughs) no i'm referring to 1971 so yes i want to talk about uh what you wanted, what you felt God was asking you to do, leading you to do when Love Church was founded, and then how it's changed over the years, if it has, in terms of the way that you do things there. Because uh, you have, you really have, have sort of two different uh, things that you're focusing on. First, the spiritual needs of people, bringing them to right. faith, and then right. growing disciples. But you also deal with the very practical tangible needs of life and we think often of the basics being food and housing how did you do that in the early days and how has that changed as you've done this for 40 years Mm -hmm. and what do the poor really need how can the church really help the poor that's a lot of questions but we'll just sort of unpack that all together okay well one thing that was so helpful when we started uh, love church uh, there was an area pastor uh, who who really helped me um, have a vision, have a have a vision. Uh, the word says, without a vision, the people perish. Paul said, I was obedient to the heavenly vision. And so, uh, in our first church, I think that's where that's where we made it. I made a terrible mistake was we didn't have a clear vision. I think our main vision was you didn't have to wear a tie. Um, but. Uh, uh, you know, if you don't have a vision as a pastor, then everybody else in your church will determine it for you. You're drifting. Right. And so, uh, you know, WBCL has a vision. You 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 have a, a group of people that, that you're trying to reach to. You're not going to reach everybody. And McDonald's is not going to reach everybody. Taco Bell is not going to reach everybody. But when, when we came up, uh, uh, my pastor friend said, you, you're not ready to start this church until you can tell me the vision of your church in one sentence. And I think there's pastors here in Fort Wayne, they couldn't tell you the vision of the church other than generic, well, preach the word. Well, the cults would say the same thing. But what specifically did God call Love Church to do? And we just said a church family demonstrating the love of Christ to the needy. Okay, so that was that was our vision. And for 25 years, 
you know, that's that's essentially been our vision. When when Wallace takes over, come January first, the vision is the same. Mm-hmm. The vision, the vision is changed. Now, how you accomplish that changes. Just like WBCL, you have all these different stations, but the vision still is is the same. And so, I think the main change in terms of we're really asking ourselves, how can we really help the poor? Really helping the poor is not just paying their bills or giving them giving them stuff, really helping the poor is, first of all, entering them to the lordship of Jesus Christ, and second of all, is to help them to help themselves. Many of our dear people come from a victim mentality and government government uh, subsidy and government this and government this and government this. And, and I believe the, the, the government has a role to play, but the government is not going to teach people how to read the Bible. They're not going to baptize people. They're not going to disciple people. They're not going to offer job training. They're not going to help people get off the welfare rolls. If everybody got off, the, there's, um, uh, I, I think somebody said if every church in Fort Wayne would take 64 people, we wouldn't have one person on a welfare roll. So, but once again, if I was the poor and the needy, I'd, and if I didn't know anything about the church, I'd probably go to the government first myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm not as critical toward these people. They're trying to survive, but we're trying to help them to do more than survive. We want them to get off that the government welfare and to be responsible mm-hmm. and to be able to um, uh, to build a that, life. To build a life, mm-hmm. uh, Lynn. I th- I think that the, the 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 difference, primary difference now, is that you've heard the adage of you need to teach a person to fish, not just give them a fish, and we're trying to teach the the people how to fish uh, through Love Auto Repair. It's not just about fixing cars, but it's mm-hmm. teaching men uh, who haven't perhaps had a job in the past, but who have skills to teach them how to fix cars so they can start a business or they can be rightfully employed um, and then they can provide for their family. Uh, and there's multiple business concepts that uh, we are beginning to look at across the board. I think at one time there was 18 different businesses that, that the Love Community Center or the Love Center, as we're going to call it, um, is going to be birthing that people can actually not only get job training, but they can actually get a job uh, so that they don't have to uh, stay on the welfare dole. Like this week, we we were offering um, uh, forklift training for four and a half hours. And the, and the guy, after four and a half hours, he took a forklift test and he, he got 100 on it. Uh, we have two other men, uh, one who is on mental disability and another young man who's just out of prison. Well, he needs, he needs 75 bucks. He needs $75 to pay the Department of Corrections to to maintain his parole status. Okay, well, he doesn't have a job, so where's the $75? Mm-hmm. Then we have some lady in our church, and she's going to be renting out an apartment to a couple in our church, but she needs the thing inspected. And so it has to be painted and fixed up. So these two guys, along with another man in our church, went and fixed up that place, painted it all, fixed it up. Well, the brother who he did, we're not giving him seventy five dollars. He earned seventy five dollars. And uh, the other one just wanted some bus passes. But he sits at home day after day after day and does nothing but watch television. But this week he was helping to paint a house and feeling good about himself and earning those bus passes. And essentially, if the body of Christ can come together, I often say from fingers to a fist, Mm -hmm. that's when uh, the world is going to take us seriously. Because my dad has often said, it's not uh, the world doesn't care with what you say, they care with what you do. And if we can come together from fingers to a fist and really work together, uh, we can we can provide this benevolence in a, in a new way that it's not just a handout, but it truly is a hand up, mm-hmm. um, as as has been said before. It's 1021. You're listening to Midmorning on the WBCL radio network. I'm Lynn Ford, and we're talking with Phil and Michael Morton. We really don't need you, Lynn, actually. I'm sorry. I, I hope you, know you don't what? feel neglected. I don't feel neglected at all. I would much rather reel a guest in <laughs> than drag stuff out of a guest. And people tune in to hear our guests. My job is to facilitate. Very right? good. Thank yes. you. So we let love me just, you, Lynn. Let me just do the business part of this. <laughs> Thank you, Clark Chiropractic Clinic, 6015 East State Boulevard in Fort Wayne. 
Lane. They're helping to make our conversations possible. And the fact is, you two being father and son, and you often speak together, that you have this sort of innate rhythm between the two of you, and it, it's so beautiful to watch. Michael, let me ask you a question about your dad and your mom, Franny, who's been uh, who passed three years ago. Uh, what have you learned from your parents about modeling Christ and really living and loving as God loves? Well, I think that uh, one of the things I've learned is that God uses different gifts and different skills. Uh, my mother, um, she was uh, uh, an administrator. Uh, she was a, a doer. Uh, it didn't matter if it was 2 o'clock in the morning or 6 in the morning or 10 o'clock at night. She was out there doing something to help the poor and the needy. Whereas my dad is much more the visionary, the dreamer, the, the jokester, the, the, the person who's the, you know, will, uh, he, he tr- abuses everyone equally, uh, at least tries to. Thank you, sir. And, Which uh, is his way of showing love. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, but He's like the fourth grade boy that knocks you down because he just can't come out and say, I like you. Yeah. Will you be my friend? <laughs> but seeing how God, I mean, it just shows God and how big he is that he could create both my mom and my dad and that they could survive together for yes. 43 years uh, of marriage being so different. Uh, and God can use different skills. Uh, it was often said, or I think it was said around my mom's uh, home going, that uh, my dad started the riot and my mom organized it. Um, and uh, I, I think that is something that uh, I, I learned from them. I think also uh, their perseverance and stick to um, you know, what they've been doing in the inner city of Fort Wayne has not been easy. It, it It's not something that is the it wasn't always the cool thing to do. I think as generations are changing, I think it's becoming much more in vogue to, to help uh, do what they're doing, uh, whether it be here or literally around the world. And I think there's also a movement among believers, both young and old, that they really want their faith, recognize that faith is just, just not words. It is word and action. The yeah, two go that's together. Correct. That's correct. And I think I think the rap you know up up your question i I think also just i learned about realness from my parents uh there's there's no air about them what you see is what you get uh the craziness the zaniness um the times that my mom would take the drunk and put him up against the wall and and say don't you ever come in here like this again you're five foot two mom maybe five foot three mom yeah yeah Yeah. she was she was real Mm -hmm. and uh my dad is real and uh, i think that's something that uh, will always go with me as uh as a person that it's so important just to be genuine that's what the world is looking at and that's what people are looking for um i think in in quote unquote a religion when we know it's truly a relationship and i'm all i will always be grateful for my parents that demonstrated that realness um, and um, have continued to persevere Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, it hasn't always been easy. And Phil, you have a a new woman in your life. You've been married to Norma now for uh, two years, and she's a teacher, has been a teacher in the inner city in Atlanta. So a perfect match for you with the same heart that you have. These two are like two teenagers, uh, giddy (laughs) in love. (laughs) So, very happy As if for your them. father needed a second wind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Norma's a very, very, very uh, special, special lady. So, I'm a very blessed man. Yes, you and, are. And she also, you know, I, I should say this too, that Norma has helped my dad at Love Church in this transition and has helped him make some decisions uh, that have been good uh, for Love Church. Um, because I think that's where often a ball is dropped in church transitions is when the, uh, in this case, uh, when the, the, the present pastor doesn't leave mm-hmm. or, or isn't ready to leave. And I think Norma has helped create some boundaries and has helped um, my dad uh, prepare for this transition. So. My mom's home going, as much as I personally don't like it, I, I'm very grateful that um, uh, he has provided Norma to help in this transition. Phil, in our last four minutes, I'd like you to speak to, to every believer listening and pastors that are also believers too, but, but pastors as leaders and shepherds of churches. Uh, 
Love Church is located in the downtown area of Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches are in suburbs and periphery. And that doesn't mean that they're exempt from inner city work. And it's one of the things that has blessed you so much is to have churches come alongside Love Church because you cannot do this. Love Church cannot do what it does on its own. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Well, once again, we have to understand the priority of Jesus. The priority of Jesus simply was to preach the gospel to the poor. He does not identify himself with any other class of people. Uh, it's not the fact that he hates middle class people or rich people. He just says when you do it to the least, you do it to him. And there's uh, over 800 scriptures, Lynn, that talk about the Christian's responsibility and privilege of helping the poor. And in Proverbs it says, he that helps the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. Another scripture in Proverbs says that um, he that takes care of the poor shall never lack um, in 1997, we bought this facility that, that we're located in at 1331 East Berry. And it's worth, uh, today, it's worth four and a half million dollars. We do not owe a dime to anyone. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, the largest fundraising organization in the United States uh, is the Salvation Army. I mean, God has always invested himself in the poor and and yet when churches are, are um, church planning, I mean, uh, there's been virtually no church planning in the inner city for 30 years. And yet I could tell you three or four streets in Fort Wayne where there's probably 10 new churches. And the, the church doesn't realize how desperately it needs the poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you ask uh, one of the questions that was to state some people that have been helped. And we've had people that have you know, gone from poverty to being a deacon or a, somebody in jail for six and a half years who's now a Sunday school teacher. But nobody's been helped by Love Church more than Phil Mortensen. Nobody. Uh, in terms of purpose, uh, you know, in terms of joy. And uh, my, my humor does get me in trouble a little bit, but uh, there's a lot of grouchy Christians out there. But but just just the fact that God is pleased, I know he's pleased with, with any church that gets outside of its comfort zone and loves these people with a Christ-like love. You, you never, you, you always get more than, than, than you give. And I think we're finding that in the present day economy that even the churches that are out in uh, the suburban areas, they're dealing with some of the mm-hmm. issues uh, that Love Church has been dealing with for years. And so what a great, I mean, I, that's one of the great things about the city of Fort Wayne and great about Love Church is that it really becomes a microcosm uh, of the world. And what a better opportunity than to partner with Love Church to learn how to help your people in your own mm-hmm. neighborhood. Uh, one of my friends said once that uh, the churches that are out in suburbia, uh, they have, uh, or the people that live in suburbia, they have needs too. They just have more money to cover it up. Um, and so I think that one of the things that uh, Love Church can do is that they can help people know how to better help their people that are struggling in the community. Jay Kessler said it best, former president of Taylor University said that Fort Wayne is large enough to have all the urban challenges and opportunities, but yet it's small enough that we can get our heart around it. Mm. And I love that line because it shows, again, if you help Love Church, help the poor and the needy, you will be able to help your people better uh, where you're located, whether it be uh, out in the rural community or in uh, in like Woodburn, which has been a great partner with us, as well as those that are in the suburban areas. Wallace Butts will take over as senior pastor on January 1st, 2012, and Phil Mortensen will move into a part-time ambassador position. Before we say goodbye to the two of you, Michael, will you pray for your father and the ministry of Love Church and for the churches also that are involved in listening this morning? Sure, Lynn. Thanks. Lord, I thank you again for the rich heritage that you have provided for me. I thank you for um, uh, grandpa, grand, uh, great grandpas that uh, loved you and served you uh, along with their spouses um, as pastors and how you have blessed me to have a mom and a dad that uh, loved you enough to give their lives to you and then to serve those people that you love, the poor and the needy. I thank you, Lord, that um, you have uh, provided a place for us in heaven where my mom is 
at and not suffering any longer, but you've also provided a place here um, and, a, and a woman in Norma for my dad today. Lord, I ask a blessing on my dad and Norma as they embark on this next adventure um, after they take a short sabbatical and then return. Uh, I pray that you will continue to bless them and help them, not only in their marriage and their walk with you, but also in helping the poor and the needy that so deeply need you. Lord, I thank you again for the heritage and legacy that I have and what I have been given, and I ask a blessing on my dad and love church and those that uh, help the poor as you have commanded. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen.